Okay, this sermon is entitled, Believing with Your Exocrine Gland. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 23 reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Now, I found this stupid track on the ground, and it literally says that you have to believe in your heart. It doesn't say what you have to believe, and it doesn't explain what heart belief is. And then somebody sent me this video by this stupid unsaved devil, Brian Dumlinger. His new YouTube handle is Born Again Barbarian. And in this video, he said that basically intellectual faith does not save. And I'm going to expose him eventually, but as of now, I just want to expose the stupidity of this teaching. And it basically denies that you believe in your mind and claims you have to believe something in your heart. Well, the last time I checked, any time a person believes anything, it's always with their mind. And the reason why these unsaved fools are even teaching this heart faith garbage is to confuse people. They don't have a clue what it means to believe with your heart, and they don't even care about clarity or lucidity. All they care about is being nebulous, indefinite, unclear, and completely mysterious with what they teach. And my question is, if you're going to tell somebody that they need to believe with their heart, why not believe with your exocrine gland or Why not have nasal faith, or pituitary faith, or gustatory faith, or vestibular faith? How about olfactory faith, or tactile faith? What about kinesthetic belief? Now, the point of this is to let people know that nobody has any clue what this means. And according to the Bible, when it says believing with your heart, it simply means your mind. The Bible uses the term heart to mean mind in many passages. So let's take a look at a few verses on this. Turn over to Matthew chapter 15. Now, the people who say you can't believe intellectually, they're basically just saying you can't believe at all. And these people are unsaved unbelievers, and that's all it boils down to. Now, in Matthew chapter 15, it reads in verse 19, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Now, obviously, this is talking about a person's mind. A person does not think with their heart. And it says that thoughts are proceeding from the heart. Therefore, it has to mean mind. Turn back to Psalm 139. Now, anytime a person tells you you must believe in your heart, they're basically just telling you you have to have works. Sometimes they'll say that intellectual faith does not produce any works, but heart faith does. Well, here's the thing. Works don't save anybody. They don't prove anybody's saved because unsaved people are just as capable of doing works as saved people, and it absolutely means nothing. Psalm 139 reads in verse 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. So we see that both terms are used interchangeably, and once again, the word heart means mind. Otherwise, it wouldn't mention thoughts. Now turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It reads in verse 9, But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now, what we're dealing with here is the imagination. And when it says the heart of man, once again it's referring to the mind. That's how you envision or imagine what heaven will be like. And it's saying that this is impossible to do based on human empirical observation. And this can only be talking about the mind because your imagination is not operated by your heart. And here's the thing. When people say you can't just believe with your mind, you have to believe in your heart, those people have no idea, like I said, what that even means. Therefore, they can't be saved by it. And they can't have assurance with that kind of teaching because they have no idea if they even have true blue heart faith. And it's just a bunch of stupidity. What it really means is that they just don't believe at all. So watch out for people who say you can't believe in your mind. They haven't believed on Christ at all. They're unsaved. So who cares what they say anyway? 
The truth of the matter is that you either believe on Jesus Christ or you don't, and it doesn't matter if it's with your heart, with your liver, with your elbow, or with your exocrine gland at this point, because if you don't believe, you're still condemned. If you do believe, you have everlasting life, like the Bible says. So the real issue is belief versus unbelief, not head belief versus heart belief. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.